1734, British sea captain William Snellgrave asserted that Africans had been trafficking in slaves long before Europeans arrived, and he detailed how Africans could become enslaved in their own country. Slavery could be the result of a crime or an unpaid debt. Parents could also sell their children into slavery. The most common source of slavery, however, was the capture of war prisoners by an opposing tribe or state. Snellgrave maintained that the slave trade between Europeans and Africans was moral and just, and that the African slaves benefited from it. He claimed that because of the cost of purchasing slaves, Europeans had an economic motive to treat them better than Africans. Furthermore, European slavers would introduce African slaves to Christianity, thus saving their souls for eternity. Many Europeans shared Snellgrave's opinions, as did the Catholic Church and its popes, who issued several decrees concerning Africa, beginning in the mid-15th century and authorizing the enslavement of non-Christians. While it is important to note that the statement acknowledges the exaggeration of the improved treatment of slaves by Europeans, it does highlight a valid point regarding the nature of the slave trade as a commercial enterprise. Europeans, due to various factors such as disease and the military power of Africans, did not have the ability to freely raid the African continent and capture individuals for enslavement. This led to a reliance on engaging with African partners as trade counterparts. Contrary to popular belief, the African continent had a long-standing history of slavery with the practice being controlled by the African elite for centuries before European involvement. It is estimated by historians that Africans had already sold millions of slaves to the Islamic world prior to the arrival of Europeans. When the Portuguese arrived on the African coast, they found willing African merchants and rulers who were eager to exchange enslaved Africans for various goods. In essence, what the Europeans did was tap into existing systems of slave trading and introduced a new method of transportation across the Atlantic to the Americas. This does not absolve Europeans of their role in perpetuating the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade, but it does shed light on the complex dynamics and interconnectedness of the trade between African and European entities during that historical period. It is important to view slavery and its deep history not as a white versus black racial issue, but as a long-standing example of us versus them exploitation. Slavery has existed in various forms since at least ancient times and throughout many world cultures. Before the Industrial Revolution, the invention of advanced labor-saving technology, and the development of markets for free labor— Forced or coerced human labor was used by civilizations from Samaria, Egypt, and Greece to Rome, and eventually African and European nations. Cultures and nations routinely used other cultures and nations deemed different or inferior as sources of slaves. In other words, European and African involvement in the slave trade was just one link in an already long chain of examples. In Africa, Slaves served in a variety of roles. Some worked on the agricultural estates of nobles and kings. Some served in domestic roles or as indicators of wealth and prestige. Some performed hard labor in gold mines or as soldiers. And others served as artisans, concubines, tutors, and in many other roles. Slaves in Africa were seen as a form of property, and slave markets abounded throughout the West and Central Africa. The all-too-real danger of becoming enslaved due to violent raids by other Africans prompted many African communities to use the natural geography of cliffs, lakes, mountains, and caves, and the construction of walls around communities, towns, and cities to protect themselves from aggressive neighbors. The discovery of the Americas and the increased demand for the labor-intensive production of sugar led to an increased European demand for slaves, and Africa provided the perfect solution. Not only was it close to the trade routes going west to the Americas, but it had a pre-existing system of slavery that facilitated the trade. 
business-savvy African merchants and rulers knew they held a product highly valued by Europeans and adjusted their prices accordingly. Some demanded cowrie shells for their slaves. Others requested European goods such as rum, tobacco, guns, iron bars, axes, knives, and textiles. These goods enhanced the prestige of their African owners while also providing a military advantage over their rivals. A typical slave trading venture might begin with a European ship captain before his departure, obtaining from his government the necessary permissions and paying the necessary fees to trade in slaves. He would hire a crew and check the local ports for men returning from Africa to ascertain the current value of slaves and the goods African traders sought. After purchasing supplies and desired trade items, he would set sail for the African coast. For their part, African rulers and merchants would acquire slaves, often through violent raids, and bring them to coastal forts, such as the one shown in, to be held until they were purchased by Europeans. Having arrived, the European captain would likely offer gifts or pay dues to the local African traders and kings in exchange for the opportunity to trade with them. The captain would then purchase as many slaves as the African merchants had available and continue this process all along the coastline as he sailed to various vendors until he had purchased his desired number of slaves. A trip could last weeks or even months depending on the number of enslaved people available at each stop. During the purchasing process, the crew outfitted the boat for its transatlantic voyage. They installed planks in the storage hold on which to keep the slaves and nets around the deck to prevent escape or suicide. Enslaved people spent the hellish voyage across the Atlantic Ocean shackled together in the cramped, dark, and foul confines below deck. Approximately 10 to 15 percent of the 12 million Africans in the slave trade, more than 1 million people, died on the voyage of disease, mistreatment, or suicide. Known as the middle passage of the triangular trade between Europe, Africa, and the Americas, the ordeal took one to two months. After arriving in the Americas, the captain would sell his slaves for local goods including cotton, rum, sugar, dyes, and logwood. These goods would then be transported back to Europe for sale. Although European and African slavers saw the slave trade as beneficial and lucrative, the Africans who had been kidnapped and enslaved suffered inhumane exploitation, mistreatment, and denial of the fundamental individual rights to life, liberty, and ownership of their labor and themselves. Before 1820, four of every five people bound for North or South America arrived in chains. Once purchased and transported from Africa, slaves ended up in a variety of places. A small portion was taken to Europe. Nearly one-third of slaves were sent to Brazil, which received more than four million slaves to work on its numerous sugar plantations to mine and pan for gold and eventually to grow coffee. Caribbean islands owned by the British, French, and Dutch likewise received millions of slaves, as did Spanish America, where enslaved people commonly worked in the mines, in artisan trades, and around ports as laborers and sailors. Contrary to popular belief, British North America received only about 6% of the captives transported in the slave trade. Demand was greater in the sugar islands of the Caribbean, whereas North American labor needs were met, in part, by white indentured servants and a naturally reproducing slave population. In the end, however, Africa and Europe worked together to supply the Americas with their primary source of immigrants in the colonial period, African slaves. In conclusion, exploring the historical complexities of the transatlantic slave trade and its impact on different regions is crucial for understanding the present. By subscribing to our channel, you can gain in-depth knowledge about these historical narratives and join a community dedicated to promoting awareness and understanding. Let us embark on this journey together, deepening our understanding of the past to shape a more inclusive and equitable future. Subscribe to our channel and be part of the conversation today.